Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. Last week, we started a new lesson called Pride and Humility. Pride and Humility. And if you missed it, you can go to my website at www.victoriousfaith.co. That's V-I-C-T-O-R-I-O-U-S-F-A-I-T-H dot C-O, C-O like Colorado. And go to the radio broadcast archives. And you can replay all the programs there. They're available. All the programs are available that we have aired since day one. And they're all there. As a matter of fact, last Friday, I shared with you some scriptures. We actually went back and gave some foundational teaching that I gave in the lesson called The Story of the Glory. The Story of the Glory was a teaching about Genesis one twenty six, and God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness, how God created man in his own likeness. And we traced that word likeness to where Adam fell, Adam and Eve fell from God into sin. They lost the likeness of God in their nature. Their nature became like Satan God's nature is love. Love has no fear. It's fearless. Love, and and it was humble, but they became like Satan, fear-based, tormented, and full of pride and selfishness. The The nature of Satan they took on. But then in the New Testament, in throughout the New Testament, and you can trace it, Ephesians, Colossians, Hebrews, as we did in that study, how we have been been made again new creations in the likeness of God. And last Friday, I took you to Ephesians 4, 22 to 24, put off the old self and put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. And So we looked at that, and so we see that actually this pride and humility problem, it pride and selfishness are the two primary characteristics of the sinful nature. Pride and selfishness. They are very similar. Pride is self-exaltation. Selfishness is putting self first. Or prioritizing self, which are very similar, but they're a little bit different. And so actually, you you almost might say that selfishness comes from pride. Because by exalting self, self self-exaltation, pride, you're putting self first, being selfish. And so we see that those are the root characteristics of the sinful nature. We talked about humility. The root meaning of humility is to lower, to make low, to lay low, to reduce self-dependence, to reduce self-dependence and to make meek and submissive to God, to God's word and to God's will, to crucify the flesh. Humility is entire dependence on God. It's reducing self-dependence and becoming dependent on God. Humility is acknowledging that you can do nothing in and of yourself and anything good that is in you or that is done by you is because of God, not because of you. Humility is acknowledging that everything good is from God. Everything you do that is good, everything that is in you that is good is because of God. Anything and everything in you that is bad, anything you do that is bad is because of you. That is a simple lesson a five-year-old can learn. The bad is you. The good is God. Everything good is from God. And you have to then give him credit and acknowledge him for the good that is in your life. And you acknowledge what God says about you. We talked about not denying the word, not 
degrading yourself, not talking bad about yourself. There is a false humility that we read about in Colossians chapter 2, verses 18 and 23. It talks about false humility. And false humility is a lot of the religiosity that you see in Christians. It's not a realness. It's false. It is pride. It's based in pride. And it's this, it's self-deceived, which we're, we've talked about a little bit already. We'll talk about more. So humility is not talking bad about yourself, not putting yourself down, not degrading yourself. Humility is actually acknowledging what God says about you is true. Pride is denying what God says. Denying what God says has said about you or about anything else. It's also forgetting. You know, a lot of times it's not that we are intentionally denying God, but we are forgetting God. And to forget God is pride. To forget God is pride. Pride is independence from God. To forget God is pride. And then the last couple days last week, we were talking about the ugliness and deadliness of pride. And we saw that pride is the root of all sin. Pride was the cause of Satan's fall. He was called Lucifer when he was an archangel in heaven before he sinned. Isaiah 14, 12 through 15. We read of those scriptures where he said, I will, I will, I will ascend. I will raise. I will sit. I will ascend. I will make myself like the most high. All of those show his self exaltation and what he was going to do for himself independently from God. And verse 15 says, but you're brought down. You see, that's the deadliness of pride. When you exalt yourself, you will be brought down. Verse 15 says, but you are brought down to the grave, to the depths of the pit. When you exalt yourself, you will be brought down. And so we see that pride was the cause of the very first sin and rebellion, the sin of Satan, the rebellion of Satan. But it was also the very, the cause of the first sin of man. Pride was the cause of the first sin of man. And we looked at Genesis chapter three. Verses one through seven. And in verse four, the serpent said, you will not surely die. Well, that's pride because he's denying what God said. And then verse six, I mean, verse five, you will be like God. So there was a temptation to get something on their own for themselves independent from God. Number one, forgetting they already had it, forgetting that they were already made in the likeness of God. God gave them the likeness of God when he created them. Genesis one twenty six. let us make man in our image, in our likeness. God already gave them his likeness. They forgot it. And so they lost it. They forgot it. So they lost it. Because they forgot it, they lost it. And because they forgot it, they tried to get it on their own. Tried to get it on their own, independent from God. That's pride. Trying to act independently of God on your own is pride. And it is sin. And then we read verse 6. That's where we closed Friday. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. And then they saw that they were naked, and they made coverings for themselves. So there again is self-dependence. Even then, they did not turn to God saying, God, help us. God, make clothing for us. They did it for themselves. Self-dependence. Pride. And so the last scripture we looked at 
was in 1 John 2.16. 1 John 2.16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Now we see those three characteristics in Genesis 3, 6. Genesis 3, 6, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food. That was the lust of the flesh. Good for food. The lust of the flesh. You know what lust is? You know, sometimes a lot of people just think of lust as sexual. Lust is not just sexual. The actual meaning of lust is strong desire. Strong desire. So you can have a lust for chocolate if you have a strong desire for chocolate. It's simply strong desire. So it does not have to be sexual. Just any strong desire. So the lust of the flesh was when she saw that the food, the fruit was good for food. That was the lust of the flesh. And then she saw the fruit of the tree was good for food. That was the lust of the flesh. And pleasing to the eye. That was the lust of the eye. And also desirable for gaining wisdom. Well, there's the pride of life. I'm going to get very wise. I'm going to eat this fruit fruit, and get wise and be like God and I'll make myself like the most high. Well, that was the pride of life. She took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her. He was with her right there beside her. Not somewhere else, but beside her. He ate it. So we see that all of these things in verse 6, Genesis 3, 6, are an absolute parallel to 1 John 2, 16. The characteristics of the sinful nature, again, and it's rooted in pride. So bottom line is, Pride was the cause for the fall of Satan and pride was the cause for the fall of Adam and Eve. So therefore, let's look at some more scriptures. We're talking about the deadliness of pride, the ugliness and deadliness of pride. But what I want you to see is pride can kill you. Pride can destroy you. And we see that it caused their fall in Lucifer's case, Satan, Isaiah 14, 15 again, but you are brought down to the grave, to the depths of the pit. Great was his fall. Well, we also know that Adam and Eve fell. They lost their likeness of God. They lost their authority. They lost their position. They lost their peace and joy. They lost their faith and it turned into fear and torment. They fell. Now let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs 11 and verse 2. And it says, when pride comes, then comes disgrace. When pride comes, Then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. So if you want wisdom, then you must learn humility and put it on. You know, this word disgrace, when pride comes, then comes disgrace. Let me read you another scripture. Proverbs 16, 18 Proverbs 16, 18 says pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit. Now, remember, we talked about synonyms for pride are haughtiness and arrogance. 
Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. So there was the fall of Satan because of pride. There was the fall of Adam and Eve and the human race because of pride. And so the fall and the disgrace that uh, chapter 11, verse two says, then comes disgrace makes me think about a time when I made a fool of myself and I felt really bad about it. It wasn't an embarrassment situation, but it was just a bad situation. I mean, where I felt bad about what I had said. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me afterward and pointed out. Now, this is after the Lord had started teaching me about pride. Now, the Lord started showing me this lesson. I, I, I said last week when I introduced this, that you probably have not heard hardly anyone preach a message, even one, that is entirely from beginning to end about pride. I mean, once in a while, they'll say something about pride. But an entire message from start to end that the topic of study is pride. Probably most of you have never even heard one. I have not really heard anybody except one of my teachers that I got this lesson from. And that was about in the late 90s. And that is where it, what started me on this lesson. And I've just dug into it deeper and deeper and studied it out more. But I've never heard anybody else really do a teaching on it. And yet it is one of the most serious issues. We're going to get into this and I'm going to show you today. Pride is a very serious issue. And God hates it. Now I'm jumping ahead. Let me get back to my story and my testimony. So this happened in my life after I had started learning about pride. And so the Holy Spirit was able to bring it to my attention. And the Holy Spirit said, you made a fool of yourself because you got in pride. You said those things because of pride. And I saw it. And I repented. And let me start from the beginning that whenever you see pride in yourself, you do two things. You crucify it and you repent. Say, Lord, forgive me. I'm killing that thing. I'm putting it down. And so you repent of it, asking him to forgive you of it. And then you crucify it. But the Lord showed me I had made a fool of myself and what I had said because I had let pride get in. And then comes disgrace. So if you ever feel like you've been disgraced, embarrassed because of something you said or did, then you must realize it was pride that what was why pride was the cause and reason for what you said and did. And it resulted in a fall. It resulted in disgrace. It will happen. Disgrace comes. A fall comes because of pride. So let me read these to you again. You need to get these in your heart and mind. Proverbs eleven two. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. And then another scripture is Proverbs 29, 23. Proverbs 29, 23 says, A man's pride brings him low. A man's pride brings him low, but a man of lowly spirit gains honor. A man of lowly spirit gains 
honor. Hum- lowly spirit is humility. But if you have pride, it'll bring you low. So what happens when you get a, when you rise up in pride, you're brought down. When you rise up in pride, you are brought down. Isaiah 14, 15, God said to Satan, you are brought down. You are brought down. You are brought low. You fall. You are disgraced because of pride. And then let's take a look. This is what I started to say a few moments ago. How does God see pride? How does the Lord see pride? Proverbs 6, 16 and 17. Proverbs 6, 16 and 17. There are six things the Lord hates. Seven that are detestable to him. So this is what he hates and this is what is detestable. Notice the very first one. Verse 17 says, haughty eyes. Haughty eyes. Haughty eyes is the very first thing on the list that God hates and detests. That means if you have haughty eyes, or you could just say haughtiness, or you could say pride. God hates it. God detests it. God hates pride. He detests. This is detestable to God. Do you want something in you? Do you really want something that is detestable to God? I don't. If it's detestable to God, it's detestable to me. You need to hate what God hates and detest what God detests. If it's detestable to God, then you say, God is detestable to me and I hate it too. So now from now on, I'm crucifying and killing every symptom of pride in myself. Amen. So you see that it's the very first thing in the list. Then look at Proverbs 8. 13 Proverbs 8 13 says I hate pride and arrogance again he hates it I hate pride and arrogance Proverbs 16 verse 5 Proverbs 16 5 says the Lord detests there's the word detest again all the proud of heart The Lord detests all the proud of heart. So if you're proud of heart, sorry, but the Lord detests you. He loves you as a person. He detests the pride. And then Proverbs 21, verse 4, 21, 4, haughty eyes and a proud heart. The lamp of the wicked are sin. Haughty eyes and a proud heart, the lamp of the wicked. So he's saying that's really the characteristic of the wicked. These are sin. So if you have a proud heart, it's sin. Then Psalm 138, 138 verse 6. Though the Lord is great, he cares for the humble. This is the New Living Translation I'm reading here. Sorry, the New Living says it like this. Though the Lord is great, he cares for the humble, but he keeps his distance from the proud. He cares for the humble, but keeps his distance from the proud. He cares for the humble, but keeps his distance from the proud. And then Isaiah chapter 2, Isaiah 2.12, 2.12. 2, 12. The Lord Almighty has a day in store for all the proud and lofty, for all that is exalted, and they will be humbled. There is a day in store for the proud and lofty, and they will be humbled. James chapter 4, verse 6. James 4, 6 says, But he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says, God Opposes the proud, 
but gives grace to the humble. You know, there's a lot of Christians that quote the last part of that phrase. God gives grace to the humble. God gives grace to the humble. Do you know what? Read the first part. He opposes the proud. Do you know the least expanded translation of the Greek says God sets himself in battle array against the proud. God sets himself in battle array against the proud. That's the Weiss translation. It's expanded Greek. God opposes, sets himself against the proud. Don't forget to quote that God gives grace to the humble, but he sets himself against the proud. You don't want God against you. I mean, it's one thing bad enough to have people against you. You certainly don't want God against you. You must humble yourself. He gives grace to the humble. And then the same thing in first Peter five, five, first Peter five, five, God opposes the proud again, the same thing, but gives grace to the humble. God opposes the proud, gives, sets himself in battle array against the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You don't want God against you. You want God on your side. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. Now, join me again tomorrow and remember God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.